been an anthropologist, a Peruvian. Uh, I started to study the supernatural world of the Andean Indians in 1968. And I was a professor for 27 years in the University of Cusco. And once in 1979, I was researching about the supernatural world of the Indians again. And uh, I met a spiritual master, Don Benito Coribama, who really showed me how there is, there was something special in the back of all these performances. And I started to study with him, and he sent me a, a first step to do something in one traditional century. In that time, I was a seven-year-old kid, and uh, I was tempted to go with him, so he took me there. And in '79, we then we took together the first level initiation in the Andean tradition by visiting one of the sanctuaries, one of the twelve sanctuaries in the Andes, which is Coyoriti. And since then, we continue learning and receiving the teachers of this master and then we get to know some others and across the time we have been using this for our own personal problem. In 1981 I started to teach the, the path just to few people. Then somebody told me how there were people who come from outside looking for that knowledge and I started to teach foreign people. Then in 93, we have a very special meeting with the holy man and hosting him. Uh, we realized how we can manage our own groups. And from 93, we start to uh, take groups of people to Peru to perform the whole rituals of initiation of our masters. And then we went to the United States and we came to Europe and we start to offer workshops about the, the knowledge and this is what we do. And we offer a series of six days which include the right side, the middle side and the left side of the path. This way of seeing the path is a way of seeing different approach that we have to the energy, but through the energy to life. So what you learn through this training is a way to adapt yourself face and to relate the reality and the energies that are in the reality. Our masters train us in the ideas like the Kausai Pacha, the world of the living energies. And the ideas of the tradition are related with a living world. Everything is alive. So in that way, we can start to live and relate with a love, with a world that is completely alive. The techniques are more specific tools in order to make a better connection with yourself and this world. As the tradition says, we are all carriers of the seed of an Inca Muku, the potential of a human being. And the energy that is in the cosmos can feed that seed in order to develop our qualities. But this is a metaphor that describes the human consciousness growing as we know it now. In the old times we just used metaphors to allow us to see it better in a different way. But basically those exercises and those practices are tools to help you to deal and to adapt with the reality, with concrete events and with concrete persons and how to improve your relationships with some other people, how to improve your relationships with your environment and how to improve your relationship with yourself and how to improve the quality of your energy across certain steps. We found there something which is which means the path of seven steps. We pick it up from our masters and he teach us about the steps and every step is characterized by several 
set of factors which are very precise. And every human being must start from the first level, and then the second, the third, the fourth, etc. And this is a progression of expanding your consciousness. This is the way in which you can say it. Then we find how these seven steps were not only a peculiar aspect of the spiritual tradition of Peru, but something which is general in, all, in every other respectable spiritual tradition you are going to find uh, symbolize the seven step of your personal development. And in that way you realize, we realize how our masters were not only the most important teachers of the region or the Andean area, but people who can have universal resonance. And in that way, uh, this knowledge increases our confidence in sharing the path everywhere because it's something which is beyond the local space of the Andes. It's something which could be useful for anyone else. Our teachers were masters of the fourth level and we were trained in the fourth level. Naturally, you can only share what you have. So our teachings and our seminars are based in the four level initiations and the four level exercises. And what the four level is about? A four level person is capable to blend and to put together different traditions to find the right connections and the meanings behind different traditions. In that way, our people, the people who's trained by us, is going to learn how to explore and find the right meanings in different traditions. And the spirit of the seminars is that. How to find the meanings behind the energies and how to train yourself into relating better with those energies. Knowing that there is always at least another way different than your, the one you have to achieve the same knowledge. That is the spirit of the four level. In that way, we learn how to honor and respect every other tradition in the world in order to be able to see what the treasures of these traditions are and how you are capable by yourself to collect these treasures. Uh, we teach only the fourth level because uh, through the intellectual comparative analysis we found how in the Western civilization almost everyone is a person of the third level of consciousness. And of course we are not going to offer you something you already have at the corner of your house, just in another symbolic language. Of course there are people who are teaching the first, the second, the third level in the Andes and even here in Europe. You know, but we decided this is not going to be our business. It's okay. It's totally legitimate, but uh, we teach only the fourth level because we realize how this is what is missing in the contemporary world. According to the tradition, the higher possible <coughs> level now in this world is the fourth. We have the expectation of the emergence of people of the fifth level or even the sixth level. Understanding the fifth level as the people who is capable to touch to, he, to touch a person and with this touch heal every disease under any circumstance. And being the sixth level, the person who is capable to, as a consequence of his consciousness level, produce light that other people will see. This is the quality that is well known in the world as the enlightenment. In that moment, in this moment of the, of the, of the history, according to our masters, and according to some other traditions, people of the top, the highest quality of people in the world is of the four level and is capable to do the kind of things of the four level. We have the expectation of the higher levels to emerge and we are training ourselves and looking for that. All our students are going to be trained and learn those levels, those qualities, and how you can prepare yourself to be able to develop even levels higher than the fifth. But levels that are not present now on the earth, 
because the times change and now we are entering a new era and in this era will be natural the emergence of higher levels. So we are looking for the recovery of this quality which is going to be expressed in the humankind. And the measure of the levels and the characteristics of every level, we are very rigid and we even look dogmatic about that. Uh, for us, if you are not able to heal in every circumstances and every other disease in 100%, you are not a fifth level person. Of course, there are great healers today, but there are healers who be success in the 80%, 70%. For us, this is not enough. If you climb to be a fifth level, you need to be a total healer. And this is the title of the fifth level we are looking for. But why we are so rigid with that scale? Because we are very open and flexible in every, in every other way. We are not dogmatic. We can pick up uh, factors of any other tradition. The tradition is very flexible and so on and so on. They are not uh, rigid rules to perform any of the teachings, etc., etc. And at the end, is what you are going to do is to play with certain factors, certain basic techniques, and you are going to create even your own personal style in the tradition. But being so open and so flexible, uh, we try to don't be naive. We are totally open to everything and you are going to give you the benefit of the doubt. If you declare yourself you are a fifth level, you are going to give you the benefit of the light, of, of the doubt. But you need to prove us with tangible things. If you declare you are a fifth level, you need to come and you need to heal every disease in every circumstance. And the same thing is with the sixth level. For us, the sixth level is the, the level in which you, are, you must glow. And you must glow with visible light. If you declare yourself to be new Inca who's coming to integrate South America, we are going to ask you to glow in front of us. If you don't glow, we are not going to, to believe you. We are going to tell you thank you very much, but we are not going to, to follow it. Okay? We receive from our masters several things that we are capable to share. The two most important ones are what is called the Hatun Karpai. Hatun Karpai is a great initiation. And this takes place in Peru, visiting and working with the energy in sacred places and sacred sites. In that way, we have two Hatun Karpais, the Hatun Karpai of the right side and the Hatun Karpai of the left side. Each one is a day, 10 days initiation and a very intensive training of a Paco. A Paco is how the practitioner of the Amen tradition is called. So when you do a Hatun Karpai, you are receiving a formal and a structured training into the Paco's activities, into the Paco's rituals and in the cosmovision. The second thing we, we share are seminars or workshops in, in the name that is commonly used now. But those are the teachings that we receive from our masters at home. Not working with power places outside, but the things that they share with us as part of our training in a private space. So during the seminars it's not necessary to go outside, you can make them in, a, in any comfortable building. And even though being trained in what the different sides of the tradition are, as you know they are the right side and the left side, but there is another one is the chaupi or the middle side. The seminar of the right side or panya is related with the tools and the exercises that are going to allow you to adapt to a big environment of sacred energies that are surrounding you. The chaupi is going to help you how to deal with your social relationships and finally the Lyoke, the left side, is going to teach you how to adapt to your inner environment, to yourself, and to how to learn to adapt, to empower yourself inside, and how to relate in a better way with the reality from inside.